Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and anything that I might have learned um, and what my upcoming plans are and then if they, I've done any other crafting during the week. I also try to post a tutorial during the week as well, one or two on something that um, either people have asked me about or um, something that I've learned from the knitting that I'm doing or I'm, I'm making something and it's got you know a particular technique in it, then I'll try and um, take a photo a video of it and post it during the week right so it's um, I'm recording from Sydney Australia and it's Thursday the 22nd of June which I think is the equinox or around the equinox so it is one of um, the shortest days of the year so it's about four o'clock in the afternoon here now and so um, lights running out so and I do like to try and record these during the daylight hours so I'll try and get going um, right away and get this done before it gets dark you'll be able to see as um as I record it getting dark in the background right so this week I've got one finished object I've got some progress on my whips uh, I've got a faux from the vault which I'm wearing uh, I've got uh, what's caught my eye this week um, some knitting plans the knit along that um, we're hosting um, some discussion about my hidden basket um, an item from there what I'm going to do with it and then at the end a bit of chatter about my week. So I'll start with the finished object. Um, this is the muscle bra hat. I can't remember which number it is. It's turned out to be a little bit longer than I had planned. Um, uh, I did block it midway but I probably got, I was sort of knitting and I didn't have, um, I, I should have put it aside but I just sort of kept knitting on it thinking yeah that's about right. So I think that this is Madeleine Tosh Tosh Merino Light um, in the colorway Neon Peach and Antler. So I'm knitting it on a 3.2, or I knit it on a 3.25 mil needle with 136 stitches. And I tried to get it so it was about half, half, but I think the cream, the antler has gotten a little bit longer than a half. So it's about 23 and a half inches, which is a little bit longer than I usually like it. I usually like it about 22 inches, but a bit longer is better than a bit too short. So you can wear it, um, this way with the antler. It's the only downside I'd say about that is that the antler is actually a little bit thinner than the neon peach. And so you can kind of see it um, through, which isn't, you know, isn't ideal. Um, anyway, I'll just pop it on. Um, so I quite, but I, yeah, I guess that's kind of up here anyway. No one's really paying that much attention to that bit there. So yeah, I quite like that. That way, or you could wear it the other way with the antler as the the body and the, sorry, the neon peach is the body and the antler is the brim. Actually, it's kind of nice either way, yeah. Anyway, it's really cold here at the moment, so beanies might start um, getting some, a bit of extra wear <laughs> at the moment. So really happy with how that came out. Um, so I'm gonna move straight into my whips and new whips, I have two new whips. Um, another muscle bra. So this is, because um, I knew that one was finishing up, I cast on a new one and I really raced through to get it through the increases. Um, so this is in Skein Sisters Yarn Fabulous Sock in the colorway As You Wish. So it's a really pretty pink with these sort of, um, what's that green color called? Oh, it'll come to me later. Um, mm, yeah, anyway, you'll probably, I'll, I'll put it in the down bar. I can't think what it is, um, it starts with C. Yes, really, really pretty, lovely yarn. And so this will just be a one color um, muscle bra hat. So that's my sort of take along um, with me when I need to not be able to concentrate because oh, on my knitting, that is, I need to concentrate on something else because that's just round and around and around now until I get to the decreases portion. So that's um, one first new cast on. Uh, the second new cast on, which I only just cast on last night, is these um, mitts for my daughter. So I made her a, a beanie and it's the same yarn. It's the Mayak, I'm pretty sure Mayak yarn and um, Rowan Kitsilk Haze in the colorway Wicked. And so I think I've only done three rows on it so far. And I just don't enjoy knitting um, with black yarn. I just don't enjoy it very much. But, but I, I do understand that a lot of people when they request knits from me, um, it's usually black. So my brother wants a black hat, me wanted a black beanie and mitts. Um, so yeah, I get that. But yeah, I just don't particularly enjoy it very much. So, and I also, it's just hard. My eyesight's going a little bit, um, which is normal, you know, I'm 50. Uh, but yeah, I do find it a bit like, just a bit hard to knit on. So I try to knit on that during the day. 
um, but at least I've cast it on, which I'm really proud of myself um, so that I'll try and uh, get a little bit of progress on that. And this, like, honestly, the mitts, they're not going to take very long. So if I can just get it done. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, another one that just happens to be in front of me now, so I may as well pick this one up. These are the skimmer socks and I'm knitting them on a 2.25 um, by Sheila Toy Stromberg on a 2.25 millimeter needle. And I'm using the Circus Tonic Handmade Firework Sparkle Sock in Turquoise Parrot. And it's got these little um, Stellina sparkles in it. It's really pretty. So I'm at the point where like I've, I've got this on hold and I'm just working down the bottom of the foot. And it's interesting actually, because um, it says you need to knit, knit until about three and a quarter inches shy of the length of your foot. Um, and the length of my foot's about nine inches. But then when I, I'm about at that point now, like I'm almost six inches, so I'm like, okay. But then when I put it on my foot, because my foot is so wide and the knitting stretches out, it shrinks by like an inch. So I can't just like measure it on the needles and say, oh yes, um, I'm about ready to do whatever the next thing is. I actually have to put it on my foot and then measure how far to the end of my foot. And that's like four inches. So I've definitely got more knitting to go. So for me, this at this point for the first sock, it's not really um, portable knitting for me because I don't usually walk around barefoot in winter and I need to be able to sort of try this on as I go um, to work out when I'm at the next point. So that is definitely at home knitting, at least until I finish the first one and I'm happy with the length. Then once I'm on this and, and everything, once I'm on the second one, it will be totally portable knitting. Um, but at this point, yes, I have to try it on. Right, so that's the skimmer socks. Um, my next um, work in progress that I'll just really quickly flash because it just happens to be here. I mean, they're in a sort of a bit of a random order. This is Ranunculus um, by Midori Hirose. I actually haven't made any progress on this, so I just want to show it in case you haven't, um, in case this is your first time watching me. So this is this is my third Ranunculus, um, and this is using um, Barocco Remix and the Colorway Eggplant. And so this is... The last two that I made were with lace weight held double or held, you know, two strands together. And this is a sort of worsted Aran, it's actually an Aran weight yarn. Um, and so I'm holding that single. And I'm at the point where I'm at the elongated stitches. So I'm just leaving that until I've finished some other things first before I, um, before I pick this one up again. But it is on my needles. And if you haven't seen my podcast before, that's one of the things that, that's one of the reasons I don't have too many upcoming plans because I do have some things that are kind of just temporarily on hold while I finish some other, some other projects. Uh, let me think, what else is uh, on my needles? Uh, okay, so the Felix pullover for Mia. Um, I will be trying this one on. Um, so it's, I'm on the first sleeve and I'm a fair way down, but I'm, I didn't go up a needle size. So this is, um, I'm knitting it on six mil needles. It is um, Sandara Aran Silky Merino in the colorway somewhere out there. And Knit Picks Aloft, I finally got it right the first time, in the colorway Labyrinth, I think. So those two together are making this fairly mild, but nicely mild, I think, um, sweater. So I'm going to try it on. So th this is a 6 mil needle, and I am actually knitting the sleeves on a 6 mil needle. And I debated going up a needle size, and I should have. Um, it just, I'll, I'll try it on. It's not super obvious, but I can tell that the gauge is a bit tighter. Like it looks a bit, it feels firmer, it is tighter. I just grabbed like a, um, my little, you know, ruler, and I just put it, and I think on the sleeve, I could easily measure three inches. And um, on the sleeve, I get about 13 stitches. And on the body, I get about 12. So that's, you know, that's definitely different. Um, and also it just feels a bit snug. So because it's a sweater and it's going to be, it's for Mia, but she's she's a similar sort of um, rib cage size to me, but bigger bust. And her arms are probably pretty similar. And actually it doesn't feel too tight, but it's just, oh, I don't know. She said she was fine with it. But then she tried it on, she tried it on over a white work blouse. So I might get it, before I rip it out, because I am actually thinking about ripping it out. Um, she said she was happy with it. 
Maybe I should just listen to it. Anyway, I, I haven't ripped it out because I wanted to show it here and also get her to try it on again just with like a t-shirt um, because it feels, it actually doesn't feel too snug. I was just a bit worried about it being like sausage casings. It feels just okay, just okay. Like it doesn't feel like, it feels like no ease. Does that make sense? No ease at all. And actually Mia does quite like wearing fairly fitted things. Um, she doesn't, she wouldn't want big loose baggy sleeves. So look, it's not, it's not horrible, but you can tell, I think you can tell that fabric there is quite a bit denser than this. Maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Look, no one's gonna like look at it and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe she didn't go up a needle size. But um, yeah, anyway, I will get her to try it on when she gets home from work one more time. Um, and then like, it's not far down the sleeves. Um, yeah, but like last time I just grabbed her when she was she was home from work and wasn't really wearing something that would be appropriate, what she would normally wear underneath it, if that makes sense. I just didn't want her to be like, oh, it's fine, mum, but inside going, oh, it's really tight. So, because that's not a lot of knitting, to be honest, it's not a heap of knitting. Um, and I've tried to loosen up my gauge a little bit. Look, it's probably gonna be fine, but I will, um, I'll get her to try it on again. The other thing that I was going to say about this was um, I did a tutorial on the um, tubular bind off, but then when I went back to edit it, it wasn't very clear and I wasn't super happy with it. So I'm going to scrap that and I'll do another one. Sorry if you're waiting for that tutorial. Um, I do, I promise I will get it up next week because I, um, I'll do it on the sleeves though. The other thing that I didn't do and I just talked about and I forgot to video was actually the process of the double knitting and then the technique of getting the two, um, getting the stitches onto the two needles. Um, I will take a video of that because it is kind of awkward. So I, I thought I might, I'll, I'll link, and I hadn't done that before. And obviously I'm not going back to do it here, um, but I can do it on the sleeves because there'll be a tubular bind off on the sleeves and I'll, I will record that and the whole process and the grafting at the end. And because that's not a lot of knitting and I'll get confirmation from her. Oh, she's going camping this weekend. Hmm, I'm gonna, oh. That's all right, I'll, I'll get it done by the end of next week. Um, it's just that like, I wanna try it on her before I work out like where to stop the sleeves. Um, and she's not here this weekend. So anyway, I'll have to figure that out. But I do wanna know, look, do you want me to rip this out? Is it too tight? Um, and go up to a six, I wouldn't change the stitch count, but I just go up to a six and a half mil needle. So just, you know, um, anyway, that's enough on that one. Um, I might just keep it on though, cause it's warm. <laughs> Uh, right, so my next two works in progress. Actually, I'll just talk about this one here. Um, well, um, it's kind of a bit annoying and clanky, I'll just sit on those. Right, so Exploration Station. It kind of doesn't count as a work in progress because I did take this off the needles because um, I decided I wasn't, yeah, wasn't loving that color combo. So I've, and I just, this will look really ridiculous. I have started the cast on for this so many times because I'm, I've done a video of it and I, I just wasn't, uh, I'm debating it. I will talk about it now. Okay. So let me go grab the, the cast ons are like quite a fiddly one. And Stephen has done a, um, a video tutorial on the cast on, but he's holding the yarn um, in his left hand and he's knitting continental and the yarn's quite thin. And so it's, I don't think it's super clear as to where he's picking up. The particular spot is the picking up the stitches from the cast on. So I'm just gonna quickly grab um, grab something, uh, a previous knit, the dotted rays that I knit that has this cast on, because I wanna show you what I'm concerned about. Okay. Um, now, as I've grabbed this cast on, this is Dotted Rays um, by Stephen Weston. It has the same cast on as Exploration Station. And I watched that same kind of video for how to do this cast on. And when Stephen picks up the three cast on stitches, he picks them up as if to knit, and um, but sort of knits through the back loop with the way that he picks them up, which is fine, except that when you pick up a stitch and you're picking them up on the wrong side. So if you pick them up as if to knit, that looks like purl stitches on the right side and honestly I don't even know why I'm being so finicky about this probably because I am doing a video on it I think what I'm going to do is do a video on both 
ways. Um, anyway, I'll spit it out. When you pick up as if to knit on the wrong side, on the right side you end up with what looks like the, the garter and it's just got this really lovely um, eye cord edging and then you've got this one bit that sort of looks like knits on it, uh, sort of that interrupts it. And honestly, that's right at the back of the neck. I don't know why, oh, I suppose it there, it's not actually, it's up one end. But on the exploration station, it will be right at the back of the neck. I'm not sure why I'm being so particular. Or well, I do know, because I'm doing a video on it. And I don't wanna do a video, but, so um, I think what I'm gonna do is put up two videos. I'll put up one video that is exactly the way Stephen does it, except um, holding the yarn in my right hand. And then I'll do another one where I'm picking it up and picking up and purling and that sort of creates a slightly less it does creates without the interruption in the um the i cord does that make sense so i will put both videos up and then people can choose whichever one they like better um yes so and that's why because i keep doing it and i keep fiddling with it that's why i end up um oopsie just lost that on the needles i mean it's not exactly a whole lot of knitting but that's why i sort of i haven't moved on from this one because um, I'm umming and ahhing about which way I'm going to do it. Am I going to pick up and purl or pick up and knit? But honestly for my own I don't know that I'll, I don't know why I care. I will get more on this um, next time. So this is Exploration Station. Sorry that's a bit rambly. You'll see the tutorials when they come up and I'll explain it a bit better then um, and sort of show the two next to each other depending on whether you pick up and knit or pick up and purl. So these are my colours. Um, for Exploration Station, so I've got graphite, It's this is all Tosh Merino light, graphite, antler, neon peach, just those two, just like the um, Muscle Bra hat, and then antique lace. And I think those, the antique lace is the only one that I'm a little iffy about. Um, I am teaching at the yarn shop this Sunday, so, which is only a few days away, so I might even wait and see if they've got anything in stock there in a single ply yarn, because I do like to keep the same kind of, these are all single ply. I'd like to keep the same kind of um, structure in the one shawl, um, see if they have anything that might play a little bit better on Sunday. But at the moment, that's my combo. And yes, that, that video tutorial will come up soon as well. Um, right, so that is, that's that. I've got uh, two works in progress to talk about. Um, I've got sorrel and the cumulus tea. So I'm just going to get changed out of this so I can try daylights. What time is it now? Oh, I said it was four o'clock. It's 3.20. Okay, I've got a bit more daylight. I can just chill for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to go take um, uh, this off and, and I'll, I'll talk about this after. But I just want to try on both the sorrel and the cumulus tea. Right, so this is my sorrel and I'm knitting it using Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colorway Nectar. And I've used some leftovers of up here with some uh, Life in the Long Grass Linen Merino. And then I think some other leftovers from the Dotted Rays, uh, the Dotted Rays shawl. And then now I'm using some um, Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles. Uh, in a colorway that was exclusive to my local yarn shop, um, Skein Sisters. So I'm at the point now where I'm actually not too far off um, switching to the last color. So I was a little bit unsure, like it felt like it was getting a bit muddy down here, but I think, I think it's, I think it's okay. Um, but I will, I think I'll be quite happy to have the ribbing in this slightly lighter. This is some more Life in the Long Glass grass linen merino leftovers from so faded just a different color and I think that will be nice for the cuffs um, and the ribbing but I've got to do a little bit of um, just a little bit of math because that's all I have and I need to make sure whatever I use for the body um, I'll have enough for the sleeve ribbing as well and maybe like a little bit of a fade I think I've got maybe about 20 maybe 16 grams not not a lot um not a lot actually i'll just have a quick just quickly wait um sorry um maybe, maybe a bit more it's pretty tightly when ball oh 20 23.7 grams so i definitely would have enough for both the calves but just how much fading i'd have 
um, and I want it to be a little bit shorter than my my other two. They're a little, you know, there's a, the other two are about another three inches. Um, so I would like this one just a little bit shorter. I'd probably wear it with blue jeans rather than black, but um, I'm just wearing black because of the it goes with my photo from the vault. Uh, so I did the things that were different. I used a 3.5 and a 4 mil needle instead of a 3.25 and a 3.75. That made my yoke a little bit longer, so I cut out one of the elongated stitches and a couple of rows here. I stole a couple of extra stitches. Those sleeves are actually looking pretty big. Um, but anyway, I know from experience that they weren't, so I don't think I did anything super differently um, from my other ones. Um, yeah, they do look big, don't they? Um, anyway, we'll see when I pick, um, if, if I am finding that they're a bit big, when I pick up the extra two stitches under the arms, I will just um, decrease them away instead of, um, instead of getting rid of them like I normally do. So, yep, that's my sorrel, and um, I, I might even have, oh no, I won't definitely won't have it finished for next week, because I still have sleeves, because it's going to be a long sleeve, um, a long sleeve sweater. So, yeah, really enjoying that one, and I like that. Um, maybe, oh, I won't get the Felix. Who knows what I'll finish for next week. That, you know, there's nothing that I have to get finished. Um, the other thing is the cumulus tea. Yeah. I had hoped, I got my, my times muddled up and I was like, oh, I need to hurry up and record. So I have started picking up the stitches. This is the Cumulus Tea by um, Petite Knits and I'm using the recommended yarn, the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the Colourway Ballerina. And I haven't quite finished the eye cord. I've picked up the stitches and I'm this is, decided to do the eye cord neckline because it was, um, I just wanted to see if it was salvageable because it was so big on me that I thought I just can't wear it. And it was not just big, but it was also the neckline was way too low. So this is gonna be a bit awkward to try on because um, I've got two balls of yarn. I've still got the ball attached down here and I've got the ball for the neck, the eye cord neckline. So I'm gonna I'll do my best. Um, oh, that's the armhole. That's, sorry, neck hole, that's the armhole. So, oh poked in the eye with a needle. Okay, let's see. All right, so I think, so I've done the eye cord for the back neck and here, and I've just got to go up this side to the um, right shoulder. So I'm not too far off. And um, I don't know if you, if you saw my previous video when I tried it on, this was way down here. So this has definitely pushed it to reasonable modesty level. And so it's still oversized, but it might be workable. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'll give it a go. And if it's if it's too big for me, then either me or Rebecca or some, someone hopefully will, it's, it's wearable now. It just may not be my size. So I will finish it because um, as I've mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of ripping and I have done quite a bit of, this is actually a lot of knitting. Um, took me quite a while to, to knit this and and I think it's nice. Like I actually really like it. It's lovely and drapey, and um, so yeah, it just might be a little bit big for me, but we'll see. So um, I'll definitely finish. I was timing myself on that, and I was like, and I put. I don't know if you can see. I put little markers along the way just to sort of go. Oh, right, I've done twenty stitches, and it took me about seven or eight minutes to cast off. I called cast off twenty stitches. I got quicker as I went, but I also was like, I don't want to be so quick that I'm messing it up because this is like clearly right at the neckline so I don't want to you know if you if you split the plies it's going to be you know and it will be really obvious if it's not sort of nice and smooth so it's it's okay at the moment but I've probably got about another uh, 777 seven, seven, 20 20 minutes or so of knitting to um, to finish that which isn't that long but I thought oh it's getting dark I need to hurry up and record anyhow I will um, if it's I finish recording and it's still not dark and I get it done I'll um I'll take a photo and I'll pop it in um I'll pop it in here and then you can see what it's looked like without a without a needle in the middle of it okay I'm gonna have to last time I took this off it got all caught in my hair so I'm gonna be trying to be really careful okay let's see if I can do this yes done okay all right it's always such a mess around here when I finish recording uh, now, I'm going to go back and put my, um, that's it for my whips, I'm going to go back and put my faux from the vault on and talk about that 
and then some of the other stuff, upcoming plans and blah, blah, blah. Right, so this is my faux from the vault. It is nurtured by Andrea Mowry and I knit it using Sundara Aran Silky Merino in the colorway Night Sleeps Calmly, which is a really nice gray. Um, it's a single ply um, merino and so I've got a little bit of pilling here. Yeah. So I probably need to give it a bit of a, a bit of a deep peel. But um, yeah, I really like this sweater. It's a bottom up sweater. Um, I'll stand back so you can see it. I used just over four skeins and it's pretty cropped. I was a little bit nervous about, um, I always find with bottom up, I'm just a bit nervous about, you know, how far to go. Um, but I think it's quite nice with high-waisted high -waisted jeans or it would be nice over, um, over a dress. The, I would normally wear it, these jeans are really, really new and super, super black. Um, I have some more worn in black jeans, um, but Alex has taken them. So these are my only um, black jeans that I have at the moment. So I think it looks a little bit nicer over some jeans that are a little bit more, um, just a bit, uh, not as like black, like they're black, like the black I'm knitting for me is mitts. Um, so it's got kind of an interesting stitch, um, sort of a, a slipped, a slipped stitch, which creates quite a nice, decorative textured pattern it's super easy super easy to knit but a fair bit of knitting so it takes like the row gauge is quite um, compressed because of the slip stitches so it's actually um, for the for the amount for the size that it is it's actually four skeins it's actually quite a bit of um, quite a bit of knitting um, doesn't feel too heavy though it's a fairly it's a fairly lightweight yarn um, and I've obviously made it cropped as well and the sleeves aren't super long either um, but yeah, I really enjoyed making it. I don't think I did almost any um, modifications, which is really unlike me. So you knit the body up to the here, the sleeves up to here, and then you join in the round, and then it's just got these raglan decreases. Um, yeah, and like a few short rows um, so that the back is a little bit higher, as we've been talking. Um, yeah, and it's it's nice. It's really lovely and cosy. And, um, yeah, haven't worn it in a while though, because it is quite warm. So yeah, but it's a good sweater. So that's my um, faux from the vault. Uh, upcoming plans and purchases. Um, I actually have something interesting to mention. I think it's called You Knit and Craft. Somebody put me, um, a uh, lady from And So On, um, Lisa? Lisa from And So On. She also knits and um, she mentioned there's a yarn shop called You Knit and Craft in Toronto in Canada and how they often, if you're on the newsletter, um, when you get an email every now and then they'll have a free pattern and there was one um, recently, the thing is I often forget to check, like I've got like a sort of a spam email account where I get all my newsletters and things and I maybe only check it once a week and like if you if you don't get onto it quick enough, like it's only they're free, a, the, a lot of the patterns, not a lot, a few patterns they show as free for like a week or a few days. And if, so if you don't catch it in the time that it comes out, then it's not free anymore. Um, but you know, it's a bonus. It's not like somebody's obviously designed the pattern and if you really want to make it, I would still buy it even if it used to be free. But I did um, uh, buy for free the cat uh, cathedral pattern. It's so pretty. Um, Right, so I've just pulled it up. Um, it's Cathedral Pullover by Claudia Quintanilla from Unit Toronto. And the yarn used was Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino and the gauge is 19 stitches. So it's actually sh would be a pretty quick knit. Anyway, it just looks beautiful. The yoke is so gorgeous. So um, even though I'm not gonna knit that anytime soon because I have so many things on the needles at the moment, that is has definitely caught my eye and I've got the pattern now and I would really like to make it. I've just got to, I'll be watching, it's got 445 projects already. So I'll be watching to see what people have used. It actually looks yeah, really, really beautiful. Probably looks nice with um, a yarn with a bit of a halo. Um, and the other one that I picked up, although I'm not sure if I'll need it anytime soon, because I don't really wear vests, but it's the Sara vest. So they are my purchases. They were free, but, um, but they're new to my library anyway. Uh, so the other things that I'm thinking, oh, 
that I would like to make. Um, so plans and purchases. I don't have a lot of huge plans because of how much I'm already knitting at the moment. I feel like that's just, if I put too much in my plans, it will be a bit overwhelming. Um, but I did, um, I've been watching Katie Jack's knits and um, what did I see that I liked on there? Oh, the mini mock neck tank by Jessie Made Designs. I think that's quite a new pattern. I'll put a picture of it up there. I wouldn't do it as cropped that I would make it a little bit longer, but um, so I'd need a bit more than one skein, but I've sort of started digging around in my stash for, for that because that looks really pretty. And the other thing that they mentioned that they've knit a lot of is the half and half triangle wrap, which is a lot of knitting, um, but it is something that's kind of just like you know, I've noticed and thought, oh, I think I would really like to make one of those, but I would need to purchase yarn. I certainly would have to purchase yarn for the um, for the half and half wrap. For the mini mock neck tank, I do have some um, Madeline Tosh 801010 10 fingery in the colorway Bloomsbury. I'll put a picture of that up there that I think would look really nice for the mini mock neck tank. So they're two things that are kind of on my mind besides all the other things that I've mentioned in the past, like the Ozetta, uh, what were the other ones, the Ozetta, Moonset Tea by Ozetta, um, the camisoles, like camisole number um, two by my favorite things. There's still so many things that I um, wanna make, um, but I just can't get too invested in it at the moment because I've just got so much on my needles at the moment. Right, um, knitting plants. Um, no, that was it, that was knitting plants. Um, the knit along. So I am hosting a knit along and people are starting to put some photos on um, Instagram, which is really lovely. And um, I forgot to, I did check, but I forgot to make a note for the new ones that are in this week. So I'll just put them up um, now and put down in the down bar whose they are. And I'm sorry that I didn't get organized for that beforehand. Um, but that knit along will run until the 1st of September and I'll choose some prizes at the end. And I'll just, um, every, not every person who's put a photo on Instagram, not every photo, but every person who's put a photo on Instagram will just go into the draw for um, maybe three patterns. I don't know, we'll see. Um, and I'll just give them via Ravelry or I don't know how, I, if it's my favorite things, I don't know how I do that, but I'll figure that out at the end. I've got till September to figure that out. So that will finish on the 1st of September. Um, right, other things were my hidden basket of whips. Um, let me grab, let me grab the sock. So, I had mixed um, responses, which I suppose is what happens when I ask for responses. Some people will say finish it, some people will say frog it. Um, but, and I was going to finish it, um, I actually, really quite like that um, pattern up the back. And I'll put a photo um, up here. It's actually um, uh, Laura Chow's design. And I'll put a picture up here of the what sort of inspired me and what I was hoping for. Um, but I think like I tried it on my foot and I just looked at it and I went, I'm really not that excited about that. I don't, I'm not excited about the color. I'm not particularly excited about having it and wearing it. I, I do really like that, but I could see this maybe in a really hot pink yarn. Um, something that's a little bit more, I don't know, something that's a little bit more inspiring. So I am, um, yes, I'm taking it off the needles. I'm gonna do it now before I change my mind. Um, taking it off the needles and I'm just gonna start ripping it right now. I won't finish ripping it, but where is it? And I'll rewind the I'll rewind the yarn. Um, there's nothing wrong with the yarn, but the colour is a bit meh. So, oh, you know what? I suppose it, mm, no, that would have been silly. I was going to say I could have like finished them and dyed them black or something, but I'm not going to do that. So, anyway, I'm doing it now so I don't change my mind. Because sometimes it's just the mental energy of like, oh, what do I do with that? And I can be a ruminator. Um, so there's just there's not much point. Um, you know, spending too long thinking about something that, you know, you're sort of not that inspired by. So yes, anyway, they're coming off, that's, um, that's getting unraveled and I'll finish that later and rewind it and put it back in, in stash. And I think somebody mentioned maybe making a men's muscle bra hat out of it. There's actually more yarn, way more yarn than you'd need for a muscle bra in that because it's a volumized, which is 150 grams. But um, that's okay, I'm, I'll, I will think of something to do with it. If it's not a muscle, um, guy, 
See, I just don't think I want to knit with a yarn again. Maybe I'll de-stash it, just see if somebody else is inspired by it, because it's not, um, yeah, it's not, like, I'm just not that excited about using the yarn even, so, yep. So that's my hidden basket of whips. I might just grab, I'm going to grab, I forgot to bring the basket in. I'll grab the basket and I'll pull something else out. Right, so I got my basket and I don't know that I'll be able to do this every week because if I decided to do those socks and I was actually gonna finish them, every time I pulled something out of the basket, that would just be one more whip and that would, that would probably overwhelm me. So I think I'll have to like, if I end up deciding I'm gonna finish something, I'll have to, this won't be a regular segment because I, like, you know, I won't be able to do it. Um, or it will just be overwhelming. So sorry about the crinkling. Here are some socks, and I do know what the issue with this is. So some of these things are whips, and some of these things are mending situations. So this um, was a pair of socks that were in a, um, just like in a basket in the office, and um, nothing wrong with that sock, all completely fine, um, but this sock, what happened with this sock? There was a um, there was a hole in it, so like a like a moth hole, and so what I did was I I can't believe that this has sat in that basket for probably like maybe three years. That's crazy. So I just took it off and um like where the hole was and unravelled the the yarn. So there was like a little moth hole there, and I was just going to um craft it because I've still got some of this yarn I think this is another crafty girl I'm pretty sure um, yes so that's all I have to do is graft those stitches so that is not a big deal at all um, right and then these socks will go back into and they've barely been worn look at that nothing wrong with them what was wrong with me why didn't I just do that that's crazy um, Obviously at the time that I put it aside, I didn't have the headspace or was busy or something. I don't know why, but, um, but yes, that will not take long. Now I just have to find where I put the, where I put the yarn. But yep, um, that will definitely, and I'll show that off next week. So that is, there's not, not really a decision to be made there. Um, that is just, I've pulled it out and that is something to do this week. And um, yes, and I'll pull something out next week. Right, what's next on my, um, I think that's it. Gosh, I think that's it. Um, oh, I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure there's something I've forgotten. Um, yeah, I haven't done any other crafting. Um, no sewing, even though I was going to while my husband was away. Um, but when I get to my week, you'll probably understand why I haven't done any because it's been so busy. Um, yeah, so no sewing, no any other stuff. But there probably will be some coming up um, on that. So if, um, if you've... Oh, it's raining. If you've enjoyed the um, podcast, so I'm going to do a little bit of a wrap up of my um, week now and what's um, coming up in my week. So if you've enjoyed the podcast, if you can um, like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week and I will have um, another like some kind of knitting tutorial during the week. Probably actually quite a few knitting tutorials because um, I'm teaching knitting at the yarn shop and one of my classes... I'll get into that in my week, but just briefly in case you're leaving now. One of my classes is kind of like a only just your next sort of steps in knitting. And so I'm uh, I'm going to put a few tutorials up of some pretty basic, um, well, when I say basic, like some, you know, fairly early knitting stuff like the knit stitch, the purl stitch, knit two together, slip slip knit, some tutorials for that, just some quick tutorials just to um, go along with my classes. Right, so anyway, yes, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Right, so my week. Um, last, so I recorded last Thursday. Um, Friday was work for me and I went for, I've been really good with my running. I've been running every two days pretty much. Um, and that's kind of like what I like to do, sort of run, have a day off, run, have a day off. And um, on Friday we have a run club at work and there, um, there's about 15 people in it but the last couple of times I've been only a couple of people have been running so I went out on Friday with there were two really tall guys and I thought oh, you're going to be so bored running with me but they were quite happy to have a slowish run and I had a fastish run so that was nice um, and then on Friday night Zach went to youth group and I 
because um, I knew I had so much to do, I did my marking. So my year 10s did an exam and I did, I just marked on Friday night, which I don't normally like to do. I normally like to really relax on Friday night, but with my husband away and parent teacher, I had year 10 parent teacher on Tuesday night and I wanted to get those exams marked so I could talk to the parents about them. So I did that on Friday night. Um, Saturday was wonderful, actually. It was really lovely. Zach played baseball in the um, sort of around lunchtime. And my daughter, Alex, who I don't see a lot of at the moment because she stays with her boyfriend most times, uh, mo almost all the time. Um, so anyway, I asked her, oh, do you want to come? Because the baseball was near her boyfriend's house. I said, do you want to come down? And she did. So we just hung out in the sun for a couple of hours. And that's just so lovely. Like when it's a real, you know, as your kids get older and then you have um, kids in their uh, sort of late teens, early 20s, the time that they spend with you, they don't have to. They don't, um, you know, they don't need you for lifts and although I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, but generally they don't need you to go places. They're working. They don't need you for money. They, although like, you know, our eldest, all my kids live with us. So to some degree, they sort of rely on us a bit. Um, but you know, if they want to go buy their own dinner, um, yeah, so anyway, it was really nice that it was just her completely. She wanted to come watch her, her brother play baseball and hang out with me for a couple of hours in the sun. So that was really lovely. Um, Sunday, the last few days have been really, really busy. So Sunday I went to a wedding with my mum and that was lovely to spend, um, you know, a nice chunk of time with her. But we left at noon and I didn't get home till 10 o'clock at night. And that's real. I find that really hard on a Sunday night to be doing that right. And then like, and Monday's my long day at work. And then Tuesday was parent-teacher night. So, and I had Bible study after parent-teacher night, which I don't normally do. Normally after parent-teacher, I'm just catatonic. Like I can't even hold a conversation. But because I only teach year 10, that's my only junior class. I didn't have that many interviews and they're really, really beautiful class. So it was all like lots of positive, you know, it was just, it was an easy night. It was a really lovely parent-teacher. I mean, they're usually fine. They're just usually really tiring. Um, but it was fine, I had Bible study, but that means I didn't get home till 10 o'clock Tuesday night. And then Wednesday I start school at 7 a.m. Um, so that's, it's been a week, so there's definitely no sewing and, and I had marking and work and stuff to do. Oh, and my year, my year 12s are doing a trial and someone else had written the exam. And so I, what we as teachers try to do is we actually sit the exam like the students, um, you know, time ourselves, see how long it takes. Um, so I sat that exam over the weekend as well to give feedback for the person who was writing it. So yeah, that's been really busy. Um, and then yesterday, oh, Alex had job interviews. So she had two job interviews on Tuesday and then she had another um, job interview, two job interviews on Wednesday. And she her car doesn't have a very good navigation system and she was in the car and she didn't pull over and she was looking up Google Maps for where her interview was and she got pulled over by the police. Um, and we, yeah, so she's going to lose her license. So I don't know what it's like in other places, but when you're on your red P's, which is what you are in your first year of driving, you only have like three points. So you pretty much can't do anything wrong. If you do get caught doing anything, you're gonna lose your license. Um, and Mia lost her license for, th uh, she lost it for three months, but we appealed and she ended up losing it for one month for um, for speeding. Um, and she's so not a speeder. Like she totally would have just like, she was in a school zone and she would have stopped at the lights and then forgotten and took off too fast. And anyway, she was like, it wasn't, she wasn't over by much, um, but she did lose her license and Alex hasn't lost it yet, but she will. So what will happen was she'll get a letter in the mail and it will, and she'll be able to challenge it um, and she won't lose her license. If she wants to, like we'll talk about it, see if it's worth it. She, the default will be she loses her license for three months. So we might be able to challenge it and, and get it limited to a month based on, you know, she will need her car for work to get to, um, and for uni so and like I think it's right that they do she does lose her license for a while and she will um, but three months is a long time and it would be a lot that's obviously an extra load on me and my husband and my mum and, and her sister anyone else who um, to take her places so but you know I, I'm a bit philosophical about those things you know she had the little accident 
and like you never want to have an accident and that's not a close call that's an accident but it could have been worse and this time she was on her phone and she got pulled over and she's gonna lose her license but it could have been worse she could have hit another car she could have hit a person so I'm hoping if it's a lesson learned it's you know there's some benefit from it um, yeah so that's been my week gone and now week coming up um, obviously it's Friday tomorrow I've got one more day of teaching and then I have one more week um, of school and then holidays I've got a second parent teacher night on Monday night so um, like that will be and oh my husband comes back on Saturday morning so I'll be picking him up from the airport and on Sunday I'm teaching all day at the yarn shop so I'm teaching two classes so it's a pretty busy week coming up like teaching yarn at the yarn shop on Sunday parent teacher on Monday night but then sort of that's kind of it for the rest rest of the week in terms of busyness um, things will be winding down um, for the three weeks school holidays which is very exciting um, yeah so um, with that with the classes that I'm teaching I'm teaching one on like next steps for for people so purling if they've never learned to purl um, some decreases increasing um, seaming with that class it'll depend on how many students in the class and I'll kind of go with what what their actual skill level is and what they're keen to learn um, as to you know like there'll be the basics that's the sort of structure of the class and then I can sort of add and subtract based on what people need um, yeah so that's Sunday oh that so that one and fixing mistakes which is a two-hour class and I really like teaching that class actually um, because I think that's that's one of the things that for knit is just being able to look at your work and go, what did I? Why does this not look like it should look, or why the rest of it looks, or how the rest of it looks? So, um, yeah. So they're the two classes that I'm teaching on Sunday, and and I'll get to. I might actually do a little video if they're cool with it at the yarn shop. Do a little video of the shop so you can see my LYS and um, the yarn that they have, and um, yeah, and I'll add that to next week's video. Um, yeah, so today is my day off. I got to sleep in till 8.30 today, which was so nice. Um, Zach's feeling a little bit, my son's feeling a little bit sick today. So he's home um, sick from school and he's like, he doesn't, um, he's almost never home sick from school. So I kind of figured, and he was really snotty last night and I thought, you know what, just let him have the, let him have the day at home. Um, and he's got uh, another reason, he's got a music camp um, he sings and he's got a music camp in the Blue Mountains which is really cold starting on Sunday morning at like I've got to get him to school before I teach at the yarn shop I get him to I have to get him to school for 6 30 in the morning on Sunday um, and that his school is about a half hour drive away so um, and he'll be there until Tuesday afternoon so I want and he's you know because he's feeling a bit congested and he sings um, I want him to sort of get a little bit better before he goes off on um, on that camp so and actually next Thursday night I'm just looking he's got a music gala so he'll be singing for that so yeah it's probably good that he actually has been is stayed home today and had a bit of a rest um yeah so my husband's coming home on Saturday that would be really good to see him and he'll be bringing um my fabric back for the um and the all the the kit the whole kit for the town bag and the field bag I'll put pictures up there of what I bought so um he nearly forgot it I was like you do have my package don't you and he was like, what package? What are you talking about? I was like, oh, I don't know, my stuff. Um, yeah, so obviously I'm looking forward to seeing him, but it will be nice to have something ready to go for the first week of school holidays. I'm not going anywhere, so I'm, like, I'm planning to do the sewing then. I think that's kind of it for, you know, things coming up. You know, last week of school, um, it will be a bit busy. Um, but, yeah, when's life not busy, so... Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. I have rambled a bit. I'm sure there's stuff I forgot. There's always stuff I forget. I'm like, I go to someone's house, I always leave something behind. I do a video, I'm sure there's something I forgot to talk about, but that's all right, I'll record again next week. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next week.